101. Oh my lord. All right. I anticipate that they are going to start generating power at the Whitney Dam any minute now. And I really want you guys to see what it looks like when they're generating power because it's something you need to know if you're thinking about doing what I've been doing and wade fishing this this uh, river. Uh, if there is any chance that that power plant is going to kick on while you're down there, you better be in a boat. Because uh, I'll, I'll show you what happens, man. That water gets going and it's moving. It's kind of scary. Especially if you're out there when it's turning on because the water really rises fast. I, I don't know that I have been here and seen it turn on since they put in the third generator. It used to be that you had pretty good warning because they ran it on a schedule. Uh, a few years back they went to a different method of operation, different mode of operation, uh, where they uh, it, it responds to demand. So like it's 100 and, 101 degrees right now and that puts a hell of a demand on uh, you know electricity grid on the power grid and you know I checked the last several days and it's been coming on sometime before 5 p.m. Uh, and I'm guessing it takes about two hours for the water to get from the dam to the first gauge. Uh, and uh, that means that probably three or four o'clock it'll, it'll turn on, they'll start generating. I'm actually not going to fish today. Uh, I'm going down there just to see this thing turn on. Uh, so I can show you all what kind of situation you got you come down here all right so all stay tuned be up there in a little bit it's about 25 miles away i think 30 minutes or so from where i work in waco y'all sit tight and hang on all right we're on 2114 fixing to cross here at the uh, the outpost dick's canoes and if the schedule holds true this should be real close to normal level and it does appear to be at normal level that's going to come up about it's normally at about five feet six feet at the gauge that's where the gauge is uh, that the measurements that the website I've got uh, that's where the gauge is that measures the depth uh, and it jumps up to about 12 feet from an average of somewhere around four uh, when when it's just normal low all right next stop is the dam I'm hoping I get there before they start because that's a really interesting process all right next stop Whitney Dam I'm on the power plant side. Came down here the last time I was down here. I came down here and figured out there's a nice little parking area down there. Looks a little bit safer than the other side as far as people, a risk to people. The other side might be a little better for access to the river, if, especially if you got a boat because you can drive right down in it. This side you cannot. Let's go. I also like the fact there's a couple of cop cars over here. <laughs> Sheriff vehicles. All right, let's look at this part first. See if they're already generating. Hopefully they are not, because I really want to see this turn on. All right, they are not generating power yet great that is great 
and I really do expect it to turn on any minute. Another nice little park. Look at that. This, this, this has got all the amenities. Just drink me a Dr. Pepper and watch the show. I don't know if that guy's just getting here, pulling out. I kind of hope he's pulling out because this is fixing to turn into a raging torrent. Watch, man, this thing is going to fill up. You can kind of see by the wall there how much it's going to go up. That rusty line. I'm assuming that's about how high it gets. So that's, what, five feet, six feet? This is the risk. I mean, that guy's down there with his truck, and if they blow that horn, you got about, well, from what I understand, you got about less than a minute before it starts generating. And it don't take long for this thing to get rolling really good. It's going to go from this. This is not power generation. That flood control the lake was very high in 2016 and 2015 for that matter. But this just gives you a good idea of just how much water can flow over that dam. I really wonder if solar and wind power generation is not part of this dynamic because it is hot as the dickens today. It's sunny, so solar is still working, but there's hardly any wind. So I would imagine that if you correlate the last several days and you look at the wind, you'll find that uh, it's been extra hot and no wind. So they turn this on to compensate for the fact there's no wind. That's my theory anyway. You used to be able, you used to, be able to come all the way up in here, if you wanted to, but then they added, I, I believe that when they added the third generator and they made it an on-demand response so there was no schedule uh, it just comes on when it's needed i believe that made this whole area that's when they checked this whole area made it off limits you cannot go down there but you can go down here i think i believe you can get on that little pier it used to be i've seen people fish there before but this whole area is restricted can't go in there. Of course, it ain't got no depth to it anyway, so there's probably no reason to come up in here. They do allow people to come down here. That whole area is off limits. This is what is left as an opportunity for the fishermen. Take a close look. This will be the measurement. You'll be able to see how, much, how high it comes up. You'll be able to look at that wall in a minute after they start generating. If they generate, there's no guarantee they will. And all based on power demand. Let's see, you know, I'm pretty sure they're going to start this thing up any minute. But I do not know for sure. Because there are a couple of variables that... It's difficult to pr predict. One thing I don't know is how long it takes for the water to get from here down to the gauge, eight miles downstream. I don't know when the power grid demand is gonna reach the point to trip on the power plant. But you watch. If it runs like I think it is, this goes underwater. The water comes up to this point here. It comes up about five feet. If I am correct, it'll be all the way up to here. Making all that underwater too deep and too fast to, to wade fish in. So I'm gonna keep my eyes open today. I think I'm just gonna walk right down there and fish in that area and wait for this water to come on. 
and then we'll go back up top and take a look from a high point which you can tell when they run it runs this stuff flat flattens it out Maybe dig up some more of this stuff ladies and gentlemen children of all ages we are gonna go catch some fish I think my lens is fogging up again and alive that's a lot less water in here so you were you were catching them last time right here in this little pit yeah yeah uh, right, right down. well let's let's go ahead and just boogie up there and take a look <laughs> that lens just keeps fogging up clean this lens a few times already game is getting rolling I'm gonna make my way up here a little bit further you keep in mind this is before they added the third generator we're waiting for them to start generating power because it would come up about oh 2,000 cubic feet per second well now it comes up to about 5,000 hoping they turn the water on here shortly start generating power that changes everything as soon as they do that Within 20 minutes or so, the bass will come up out of the deeper water, you know, half a mile downstream, and immediately start going upstream to get in that fast moving water. You just missed the horn blowing. I said to, I said to Jamie, they're fixing to blow that horn, and I'll be damned. One second later, they blew it. This water's fixing to start coming up. But uh, when, when they start generating this is I've never seen this before. That's that leading edge. They just started generating power. Started letting out water. Look at that rush of water coming down. That rings the dinner bell. Look at that. Well, here we go. That's good to see. Got old Robert Hunter here with us. He's fished us before. Let's see if we can't take advantage of it. Look at that great blue heron. See what he does when that water gets to him. Right here? Yeah. Wow. Well, you see where the mud is? That's where we were fishing yesterday. Really? So yeah. it's going to get that high? Yeah. Against this stuff. Yeah, a good thing you wouldn't be down there yet. Just paddling the kayak. We use a heavy lead ice. Yeah. Not the beach thing. I don't know if the beach thing. And uh, so you have to stay right there. Yeah, I'll throw that shoot. I'll throw those things on my three. Oh, yeah. Sand bass, that's a uh, size six chartreuse and white duck. I'll preach those all day. That's about all I use for sand bass. Just changes where the fish will be. Yeah. Yeah, it's still coming up, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, it's just going to take a while. 
J Mo's getting in position. This is about as high as the water's gonna get, we think. We're gonna get out there and see if we can't find some stripers. I don't know if it's still coming up or not. I suppose it is. Still coming up from what I've been told, over top of the rocks. The water comes up one third more than it did, so that's about a three nice foot white. rise. Now it comes up about five feet. striper it does it in on the fly rod, but I kind of cheated because I was trolling it. That's a nice one, got a good one. Robert got a good one. Put him on the reel, even. Bring them in, Robert. Bring them in. Ooh, it's a good one. There you go. And you can see why we would take the chance, even now, but you'd have to use a kayak. You'd have to be in a boat, because, man, that water, higher and faster, more of it, good night. That's just too risky. You can't wade fish it. That whole area where we're standing and fishing is off limits now, and for good reason, let me tell you. You don't want to be down there when that water kicks on. It is a dangerous situation. <laughs> Stripers busting the surface over there. Every once in a while they come up, pow, pow, pow. Those guys double up while I move to the other side. You rascals. It's alright, man, I'll get one over here. Hold that dude up there. It took about 30 minutes once they turned that water on for the fish to move up in there. You could see them coming. They'd bust the surface down there about oh, 200 yards and you could see them chasing shad. And before you knew it, they were right there where we were at. Robert certainly knows what he's doing. Jamie and I just kind of followed his lead. And it didn't take too long, we figured it out. But as far as competition goes, he outfished us probably two to one. <laughs> That's how it goes. Thanks for watching. Y'all be good. Bye. First goo. Close range, man. Close range. There's a bunch of them in here and they're starting to feed fairly well. Deep enough, I couldn't see the take, but I saw the fish make a move toward what I thought was my fly, and sure enough, man, these fish are heavy. Of everything I've caught today, they fight the best. They fight the best. Come here, fish. Come here. Come here, fishy, fishy. Bass like this fly. They really come at it with a vengeance. Come off of that thing, dude. Come on, either let loose or come on, see me. Come see me. Another little large mouth. That's the biggest reason you want to bring your dang little clippers. Little snippy things. There it is. Oh, I'm done. Goodbye. Thanks for coming. Well, I really thought they were going to run power earlier today than later. You know, I'm kind of glad they didn't, but I kind of wish they would have so I could see what it what it looks like. 
the, the danger that's involved with fishing like this. I fully expected them to run it. Okay, let's see if we got any more sight fishing. It's about six o'clock and I'm fixing to head out of here. It's a two hour drive to the house, so two hour plus. And I'm gonna go the back way. Man, I don't see any fish up here. All right, well, I didn't come prepared mentally to fish. I came only to film. In anticipation that I could show you what it's like when they turn that dang generator on. And they may still, they may still do it, but I think the other pattern they usually turn up, it's closer to midnight. They begin to generate power because the water comes down about 5 a.m. Starts down at 5 a.m. What do we got? Scissors. Yep. Fair scissors. Well, all right, well, that's fun having you along, you know. Even if it is after the fact and on the internet, it's still fun. Maybe they'll generate power by the time I get up and out of here. I'll pass by the dam, but I got a roll, baby. I hate to drive all night long. <laughs> Puppy dog way back there. Neat place. Great fishery. Well, let's head to the house. Up the stairs and back to the house. This side's cool, man. This side is cool. <laughs> Thank you. 